been come to condemn the world. Father, I do come to you in the precious name of Jesus, and I do thank you, Lord, for this day, 
Ask you, Lord, to hide me behind the cross, forgive me of my sins, and Lord, I pray that you be lifted up, and I pray that you just work mightily. In the name of Jesus, I pray and do good things. Amen. Okay, saints, our main verses are Jeremiah 33, 3, and uh, then we'll go straight to uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, and uh, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He said, call unto me. So we have <clears throat> some false prophets going to call to the Lord. And we have uh, a prophet of God. He's going to call to the Lord. And just to let you know from the outset, <clears throat> sinners do pray. In case we don't think so. But sinners pray. Yeah, they, they call on the Lord. Yes, so uh, what we want to do is we're gonna, uh, <clears throat> we covered uh, some verses last time, and uh, I want to pick up with verse 21. We'll go back a little quick review, verse 21, and verse 21 to read because I want to I want to make a point there. <clears throat> okay, First Kings chapter 18, and we're gonna pick up with verse 21, and I do want to make a point out there, and uh, and Elisha came unto the people and said, how long hawk ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. And this part I want you to see right here. And the people answered him, not a word. And the people answered him, not a word. He said, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if they then follow him. They should have said something, but they answered not a word. Okay? So I'm gonna go, uh, but they will talk. They will talk now. So I'm gonna go to verse 24. Verse 24 read. Okay. Verse 24. And he told the people, say now, he said, I want you to call on the name of your gods, with an S on it. And then he said, I will call on the name, on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. Look at this now. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Yeah. He said, it is well spoken. Okay, but what does that mean? You the children of Israel, you God people. But we want to see the grip that the world can have on even Christians. The grip. Or you may, a person may be saved and they have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And uh, so we want to come back to those two points. Then we went down and uh, the uh, the prophets of Baal. That's Ahab, Ahab prophets. But uh, uh, Jezebel had prophets too. But they didn't come to this event. But it's 450 prophets. 450 prophets to one man. And we come down to verse, uh, let me see something else. We come down to verse, well, we covered this last week. He mocked them. He mocked the prophets of Baal. He mocked them. And he told him, said, he must be talking. He must be on a long journey, on a journey. He must be pursuing. Say, he's a God. Say, he must be asleep. And he needs somebody to wake him up. So Elijah was mocking boy. We went on that last week. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to come back today, and we're going to look at, uh, we're going to start with, uh, Okay, 24. Let's see what 24 is. Okay, we just read 24. Then we'll come to 28. After he mocked them, they prayed again. They prayed some more. Okay? Verse uh, 28. Okay? And they cried aloud. Now, this is what they did. And they cut themselves. Okay? 
after the manner with knives and, and lanches until the blood gushed out gushed out okay, upon them. Man, listen. One thing about that world, thanks to everybody, they got. After uh, Elijah mocked them, they prayed some more. And they showed their God, God of bed, that they mean business about him. They mean business about him. And they, then they took knives and started cutting themselves. And blood started coming out. My God, listen, I don't want to say nobody like that. I don't want to say nobody like that. But does unsaved people pray? Sure they pray. When I was unsaved, I prayed all the time. But I won't say it. Anybody that goes up in them, uh, anybody that bet money, put it like that. Anybody that bet money pray. I can tell you that right now. They pray. Now they got the God of money, the God of sex, and the God of drugs, and many other religions in this world that a lot of people belong to. A lot of people. False doctrine, false uh, uh, prophets, false teachers, false minister. It's a whole lot. It's a whole lot. So what we're going to do, we want to read a little further where uh, Elijah, what he did, and plus they were thanks around the altar. Thanks around the altar. They like, like the, the God of Bill will going to answer them. There's only one true God. There's only one true God. And I said the other day that uh, everything must come through the word. You cannot put personal feelings above God's word. You say, well, what is personal feelings? Personal feelings are what I think, what I believe, this is the way I see it, and then Big Daddy, this is the way I feel. You can't put that on top of God's word. Can't do it. It doesn't matter how we feel, what we think. What God says in his word is true, and we are to stand on that. Okay? Now, so, come on down a little bit more. He got the, um, he fixed the altar, got the stones, uh, which represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? He got everything straight. So then what we like to do, we like to pick up, let me see where we're going to pick up at. Okay? Let's pick up at verse 33. Verse 33. Okay? Verse 33. Okay? That's what we're going to pick up. Verse 33. Okay? All right? Verse 33. Okay? And then, uh, this, is, this is Elijah now. And he put the wood in order. That's very important. Because the Lord loves things in order. These men in order. Okay? And he cut the bullock in pieces. Okay? And laid, and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Verse 34. And he said, do it a second time. The altar. Okay. And he filled the trench also with water. Okay. That was verse 35. Verse 36. And it came to pass. Okay. Came to pass at that time. Okay of the offering, of the sacrifice, that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, now he's getting ready to pray, okay? He's getting ready to pray now. It's a short prayer, but it's a powerful prayer. It's a short prayer, but it's a powerful prayer, okay? Now, <clears throat> And it came to pass uh, 
at the time of the offering, okay, of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant. Okay? And that I have done all these things at thy word. That's a short prayer, but it's a powerful prayer. He gave the Lord all the glory. He gave the Lord all the praise. And he said, I am thy servant. I am thy servant. And I have done all these things, which is, which is key, at thy word. Your will, Lord. Your will and not my will. And this is what he prayed. Okay, verse 37. Verse 37. Okay. He said, hear me now, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast Turn their hearts back again. That's really important. They may uh, not serve the Lord like they should. You may have grandchildren. They're not serving the Lord like they should. And we want to pray that God turn their hearts back. Turn their hearts back to Him. Turn their hearts back to Him. And He will. And that's why we are to pray. But we had to pray according, pray according to his word. He said, at thy word. That's what, that was, that's what, uh, that's what, he, that's what he said. Now, what I got to do, I had to go back up because the children of Israel, when he said, how long hard you between two opinions, they didn't open their mouth. So we've been looking at Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Now, Joshua said something similar to what uh, Elijah said. Elijah said, how long hawk ye between two opinions? If, uh, if the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered not a word, not one word when we read that, okay? Now, so Joshua 24, 15, this is what, this is what Joshua said. And I won't read the whole verse, but what Joshua says, he said, uh, if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, verse 15, if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, he said, choose you this day whom you would serve. Then I want to go to verse 16. Verse 16 says, and the people answered, okay? Oh, in 1 Kings 18, they didn't answer a word. But over here, they did answer, Okay? Verse 16. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. They could have said that over there. They could have said that over there in 1 Kings. Same way they said it in Joshua 24, 15, and 16. Okay? But the world has a grip and we can't underestimate the world. We can't underestimate the world because they have the grip. They're just like demons. Paul said, demons have forsaken me, having love this present world. And it can happen. It can happen. That's why we that's why we got to pray. We got to pray for our loved ones. We got to pray for our family member, our wife or our husband our children, our grandchildren, and they may pray for the unsaved. So it's a whole lot to pray for. A whole lot to pray for. And uh, Elijah prayed that short prayer, but it was a powerful prayer. 
It's a powerful prayer. He said, Lord, uh, I am thy servant. That's what we are. We're God's servant. We're his children. And he doesn't want us to be caught up in this world. As John 17, 16 said, the Lord, when he prayed, he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So what we want to do, say, we want to pray. Now, do you, uh, do you want to know if unsaved people pray? You better believe them. You better believe them. Like, just like I said, if they mess with money, they pray. And they either pray to some God, some false doctrine, uh, different religion, and they're praying. But we need to pray too. But we need to pray according to his will. According to his will, as uh, uh, Elijah said. He said, I've done all these things. All these things have I done. But I've done. I've done them. I did them. And I word. So we're going we're gonna to stop right there and we'll close out next time I speak. Uh, did the Lord answer? Well, he didn't answer to what? Uh, the prophets of Baal. He, and I mean, they prayed, they cut themselves. They were in serious business. And they are serious business in that world. And that's why we need to be before the Lord in his word and praying. And those are two areas that are very tough. Getting in God's word and praying. It's a tough battle, but we must do it. We must do it while we're here on earth. Because we're going to be on earth, on earth long. So while we, while we are here, we, we need to give the Lord everything. So let me close out in prayer. There may be one person that's looking, and you're not saved. And you could be praying and praying and praying. But you're praying to the wrong one. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. That he was buried and that he rose from the dead. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So you can pray a prayer like this today. Man, woman, boy, or girl, doesn't matter. And you get saved today. Pray like this. Dear God, I am a sinner. I want a new life. I want the life more abundantly. I'm lost. I need you to save me. I believe you died on the cross for my sin, that you were buried, that you rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And lead my life for him. Let me close in prayer. Dear my Father, I do thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that God the Holy Spirit will truly minister. In the name of Jesus, I pray and give thanks. Amen.